So a lot of you have been asking me in the comment section about using atropine eye drops as a form of eye floaters treatment. And we've talked a lot on this channel about eye floaters because it's a very difficult thing to deal with. You're kind of annoying to see all the time. So in this video, I'm gonna break down how atropine eye drops work and how they can be used to help eye floater symptoms. Then we'll go over some of the complications and potential side effects of this medication. And then I'll share some tips on how you can get this yourself so you can try it out and see if it really is gonna to help you because getting this medication turns out to be a little bit easier said than done. That's today's video. Let's take a look. Hey, welcome back. This is Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show. And on this channel, we do a lot of education around eye diseases, their treatments, as well as helping people find the best vision products so that you can keep seeing your very best. If that's something that interests you, then consider hitting the subscribe button down below, ring the bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Now again today, we are talking all about atropine eye drops and specifically how atropine eye drops can be used as a form of eye floaters treatment. Now to be specific and very clear, they're not really an eye floaters treatment. They're not a cure for eye floaters, but they can be a way to reduce eye floaters symptoms. And I say that because it's not really affecting eye floaters inside the eye. Instead, they're changing really how you can see those annoying drifting spots side to side uh, all day long. And I can think of at least three reasons reasons why eye doctors usually don't prescribe this or why I don't think it's quite as popular yet, but uh, we'll get to that toward the end of the video. But in general, atropine eye drops work by affecting your parasympathetic nervous system, and this causes your pupils to dilate really big. And this is important in the eye clinic because we can utilize these drops to really open up the eye and allow your eye doctor to look inside, detect different diseases that be, could, go, could be going on, and to even help relax the eye muscle inside the eye called the ciliary body so that we can get a more accurate prescription, especially when considering doing eye surgeries or anything like that. But usually eye doctors don't use atropine in the eye clinics very often anymore because 1% atropine is incredibly strong. And if your eye doctor did put that in your eye, they probably didn't like you because that makes your pupil dilated for like an entire week. Usually in the clinic now we use derivative forms of these eye drops called tropicamide or another one called cyclopenolate because they only work for a few short hours at a time and they usually achieve a, a, enough of a desired clinical effect to get our job done. However, atropine eye drops are still prescribed as an alternative to patching therapy for kids with amblyopia or lazy eye. It uh, still gets a good clinical effect, it's just an alternative for kids who just don't want to keep wearing a patch all the time. Also, there's a lot of cool research in using diluted atropine for myopia management or myopia control, which is a way to help slow down the advancement of nearsightedness, myopia in young children, but that's a whole other complicated topic, and uh, I do plan Plan to have a whole video series on that. So again, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you don't want to miss that, make sure you are subscribed again so you'll be alerted when that comes out. Now the whole idea of using atropine eye drops to relieve these eye floater symptoms is that by giving a really diluted form of atropine, you can get the pupil of the eye to dilate just a little bit. Just enough to help relieve symptoms without causing nasty side effects. The whole idea of how this is supposed to work is that you have these eye floaters which are suspended in the vitreous humor inside the back of the eye. And then all the light which you are seeing around you day to day, that's casting that image onto the retina, but the floaters get in the way and so they cast a shadow onto the retina and that's why you're seeing those squiggly lines move back and forth. I know it's funny to hear how some people say it looks like either small worms or it looks like little bacteria or parasites swimming around. I always think that's great to hear. Mainly because I myself have had those same thoughts, especially as a young kid, I was like, what are these things I'm seeing around here? I even thought sometimes it was just my contact lens being dirty and things like that. But the idea of using the atropine, especially at a low concentration, it would allow your pupil to dilate just enough so that you let in a little bit more light, which will disperse the shadow and making it not so concentrated into one spot so you don't see the floaters as easily. And at least one published report that I read from the European Society of Cataracts and Refractive Surgery found that in I think 38 different eyes that they studied, about 70% of the people who used a 0.01% atropine eye drop had a significant improvement of their floater symptoms. And then another 20% had just mild reduction in their symptoms. And only about 10% of these individuals, although it was a smaller study, said they didn't really notice any benefit from it. 
Now, of course, using any medication, there are potential side effects, especially with the stronger 1% atropine dosing. In those cases, uh, doctors always have to worry about increased heart rate or what's called tachycardia. We have to worry about uh, urinary and constipation issues, uh, as well as uh, flushing of the skin and altered mental status, interestingly enough. But usually with these smaller 0.01% atropine, so a really small percentage, uh, there's really no reported complications other than occasional allergies to the surface of the eye. It is also possible at a really weak concentration that atropine eye drops could reduce your accommodative ability. That's again, your ability to focus on your object. So if you're somebody who has either a reduced accommodative amplitude to begin with, or if you're somebody who's approaching like 35 to 45, you may start to have more difficulties Focusing on, near, focusing on near objects like your phone. You may have to reach for reading glasses earlier, things like that. But still all very valid things to be concerned about and something that doctors have to weigh and consider when prescribing these medications. Now, if you're wondering if using atropine eye drops is gonna work for you and your floater symptoms, it's of course is something that you need to talk with your eye doctor about, but there still may be some challenges in you getting this eye drop in order to even give it a try. Namely because most eye doctors aren't really utilizing this. This is again something I've seen more anecdotally either across the internet or hearing some other doctors kind of trying it out for some patients who are very symptomatic. And the reasons why I don't think this is very popular is one, it's not something generally discussed in the training when you're becoming an eye doctor, whether you're an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, it's just something that doesn't really come up. It's not widely studied or widely published. But hopefully because there are so many people with floaters and they're just frustrating people and people are looking for an alternative treatment outside of surgery, if you're not a good candidate for surgery or something like that, this, uh, this may be coming a, a better option. I think the other two reasons why it can be challenging to get this is because some doctors are either, because they're just not super familiar with it, they may not feel comfortable giving it a try, or it mainly because 0.01% atropine is difficult to get. 1% atropine is usually pretty easily obtained through any general pharmacy, but getting a 0.01%, a highly diluted formulation, needs to be acquired through what's called a compounding pharmacy. And unfortunately, compounding pharmacies are just something that's not readily available in every community. So in order for an eye doctor like myself to prescribe a low dose atropine, you have to find one of these special pharmacies, begin a conversation with them, make sure that that, that pharmacy is either available there for the patient to go pick it up or that that pharmacy can mail it directly to the patient. And it's usually a lot easier said than done and thankfully maybe something that is becoming more popular going forward in the future. And I can speak directly from the experience at our clinic where we do use compounding pharmacies to help get low dose antropine for myopia management or myopia control for children. So I think if you are trying to find uh, a doctor in your area that may be able to prescribe lotus atropine to try it out for you and if this is going to help for you and your floaters, you can certainly call your clinic ahead of time and ask if it's something they do if they work with compounding pharmacies, but chances are if your clinic does myopia control or myopia management for young kids, they likely will have access to a compounding pharmacy to get lotus atropine. But again, I can't speak for all eye doctors out there. Not every eye doctor may feel comfortable in prescribing low-dose atropine for you, especially uh, if they haven't heard of uh, kind of these studies or anything like that. The one published study I have read, uh, I'll again put links to that in the description below. And of course, if you uh, end up finding a doctor in your area who hasn't heard of this, please feel free to share this video with them and their clinic. My only hope is that this will at least open up a discussion and kind of bring people's awareness that there is this kind of ongoing alternative treatment or option for people who are struggling and suffering from these floaters. Now, of course, if you haven't seen my other videos on eye floaters, exactly what they are, posterior vitreous detachment, uh, kind of the emergencies if you're having eye floaters and flashes, if you haven't seen that or talked to your eye doctor about your floaters, uh, specifically to make sure that the eye is healthy and okay and that you don't have a retinal tear or detachment going on, uh, I definitely encourage you to check out those videos. I'll put them in a full video description, uh, full playlist down in the video description. But 
but uh, definitely again speak with your eye doctor because they're the one who knows your eyes and your eye health and they're going to help you out the most but let me know in the comment section if you have used atropine eye drops at all for any reason but specifically for floaters i think it'd be great to hear some feedback of people who've had good benefits from it maybe if you had it and no real cha changes to your floater symptoms again let us know in those comments because i think that's a great way for people to just kind of see what's going on and if they're really going to help you out otherwise again if you found this video helpful you know the drill hit that like button for me share it with your friends and family and when you think that's going to help make sure you subscribe to the channel otherwise again this is dr allen keep an eye on it and we'll talk to you soon